everyone, this is Helen and welcome to Modern Pepper. So today we will be making bibimbap. Bibimbap is a classic Korean dish that is super uber popular with non-Koreans as well as Koreans. Now in Korea, bibimbap is a classic national dish that has so much history and bibimbap originally was made for kings and queens in the royal courthouse. So today we will be making the classic bibimbap with all the bells and whistles and this recipe will also include how to make dolso bibimbap which is basically bibimbap served on a sizzling stone platter and then at the bottom you get this like really delicious crust of golden brown Korean rice it is so good. I'm gulping my mouth already thinking about that. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with bibimbap, you're probably wondering how to even pronounce bibimbap. So I'm going to phonetically make it easy for you to pronounce bibimbap. So it's B like the bug, bim like a bimbo, bop like bob, but minus the P. So it's bibimbap, bibimbap, pretty simple. In my household, I have three young boys. They call bibimbap bibidi bibap. <laughs> yeah, they call it bibidi bibap, but you don't have to call it that. So it's bibimbap. I am so excited to share this recipe with you. Now, when it comes to bibimbap, you have to make the gochujang bibimbap sauce. For those of you who've never heard of gochujang, gochujang is basically Korean red pepper paste. It really is an art form to learn how to make this, but you could purchase your gochujang and keep it in the refrigerator and you could use it for a variety of Korean dishes from soups to stews to salad dressings. So this is a staple Korean ingredient that I highly recommend that you get. So for those of you who are like, where do I get this? So you could get this at any Korean market, but if you don't live near a Korean market or you just don't have time to go to a Korean market, I will have links for you to purchase all the ingredients that we're using today and those links will be on the description box below and also my website at modernpepper.com and this goes for all of my recipes. All the ingredients in detail along with written recipe instructions and suggested kitchen gadgets for this recipe will be on my blog at modernpepper.com so make sure to visit modernpepper.com and look up the blog for bibimbap recipe and all the information that you need will be available for you. So let's get started on making our gochujang sauce. To make the gochujang sauce for our bibimbap, you need one tablespoon of gochujang and equal parts of water, so one tablespoon of water, half a tablespoon of soy sauce, half a tablespoon of honey, half a tablespoon of brown rice vinegar, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, and just mix it well. Oh, look at that. So you just want that nice color. And then a dash of Korean sesame seeds. And then again, mix it well. And voila, it's so easy. All right, so that was pretty simple to make. You can make this days in advance. You don't have to do it on the day of. You know, one of the key things about, I think for me, cooking bibimbap is because there's a lot of ingredients that go in it, I prefer not to do everything on the same day because then I'm completely tired. And you know, who wants to be tired from cooking, right? So you can make this days in advance. Just keep it in an airtight container and store it in your refrigerator. So now let's taste. Mm, it's good. So gochujang is usually very thick straight out of the container, but we just made it a little bit lighter and a little bit watery. And the sweetness is very minimal. The sweetness is an aftertaste that you could kind of tell and kind of not tell. Gochujang bibimbap sauce is not really meant to be sweet, but, but if you prefer to have it sweeter, by all means, add more honey or sugar. But as you may already know from watching my other videos, I prefer not to use sugar in my recipes unless I have to. So for me, the amount of honey in here is the perfect amount that just rounds out the taste of the spiciness and it's gonna be so good on our bibimbap. And I hear you, there's some of you out there that are like, well, I don't really like spicy food, but I love bibimbap and I don't really want to add that, so what do I do? I completely get it. In my household, my three boys, 
they're not really interested in this spicy sauce yet. I'm working on training them. So I put together a non-spicy sauce that you could use for your bibimbap. To make the non-spicy bibimbap sauce, you need one tablespoon of miso paste, one tablespoon of soy sauce, one tablespoon of water, half a tablespoon of honey, half a tablespoon of vinegar, and a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. And then we're gonna mix it well. And a dash or two of Korean sesame seeds. Mix well. And some black pepper. About 10 turns on your pepper mill. And mix it well. All done, easy peasy. All right, so that was super easy to make, wasn't it? So this too, like the spicy one, you can make this days in advance, store it in an airtight container and store it in your refrigerator. So I'm gonna have a quick taste. Mmm, that's good too. The saltiness from the miso paste and the soy sauce is really nice, but it's not overwhelmingly salty because we added some water, and additional ingredients. I love spicy foods, so I prefer this, but certainly you could use this when you have company over or for yourself that do not really enjoy gochujang, okay? So the sauce is ready. So now let's move on to making the vegetables for our bibimbap. So in general, bibimbap has loads of vegetables, but primarily around the colors of the vegetables so that when you plate your bibimbap, it looks like a rainbow of colors. So we're gonna go through the vegetables. I'm gonna make it as easy as possible, but you don't have to use all the vegetables that I'm using today. You could just kick back and relax and just watch how it's made and not necessarily make all of them. So you could pick and choose the vegetable sides, also called panchan. Typically, the protein that is used for bibimbap is bulgogi, so beef. If you have if you have not watched my video on how to make bulgogi, please do check it out because that video covers how to make beef bulgogi. It also covers how to make chicken bulgogi. It also covers how to make mushroom bulgogi. So make sure to check out that video because one of the main ingredients for bibimbap next to the Korean rice is the bulgogi that you're gonna use. So it is very critical to have bulgogi marinade with your bibimbap. I have about a cup of bulgogi that we'll be making today. And today's recipe is really for more than one serving. It would be kind of a great way to have a bibimbap party. You could put together a big platter of all the side vegetables and leave it out for people to sort of self-serve. So it might be a fun idea to host a bibimbap party at your house. For so you. the two basic vegetable side dishes that you will always find in any kind of bibimbap is bean sprouts, kungnamul muchim, and spinach, shigumchi namul muchim. Now, if you don't have time to make all the vegetable side dishes, my recommendation is go to a Korean market and even the smallest mom and pop Korean markets will always have Kongnamul Muchim and Shigumchi Namul Muchim. But making these two guys is uber easy. So make sure to check out my Bean Sprouts Kongnamul Shikju Namul Muchim video and also check out my spinach side dish video. I also include options to use kale leaves for those of you who really don't like the taste of spinach. So make sure to check out those two videos. So we're going to put this platter to the side and continue building all of our side vegetable dishes or in Korean panchan that we'll be using for our bibimbap. All right, now we're going to be making mu muchim. Basically, it's Korean radish and Korean radish is called mu. So we're going to cut the end off. We're going to cut about two and a half, three inches wide and we'll make about two cups of mumuchim. So just cut the exterior off. And then we're gonna cut it in half. And we're gonna thinly slice it. As thin as you can go, this thin. Stack it, take a couple layers at a time and just thinly slice it into tiny little strips and julienne the radish, as thin as this, okay? And then we're gonna put it in the bowl. And this is our last. This is Korean coarse sea salt that typically you use for making kimchi. So I have a tablespoon. I'm just gonna lightly sprinkle it and mix it. 
and it looks like this and we're going to put this aside and let it hang out on your kitchen counter for 15 to 20 minutes and we'll come back to it so we're going to make cucumber banchan now cucumber banchan there's so many variations but today we're going to be making the non-spicy cucumber banchan that you salt and you squeeze out the excess cucumber juice and it's just super light and crunchy and just requires minimal amount of ingredients so i have three kirby cucumbers i highly recommend using kirby cucumbers if you can't find kirby cucumbers then i would substitute persian cucumbers or english cucumbers now here are some kirby cucumbers that i cut up thin like so and sprinkled a tablespoon of coarse sea salt and we're also going to let this hang out on our kitchen counter for about 15 to 20 minutes and we'll come back to it soon so it's been about a good 20 minutes and i just want to show you the amount of water that the sea salt naturally drained from our korean radish Look at that. That's how much water it drained. And the same goes for our cucumber slices that we salted earlier too. Look at how much the sea salt drained the cucumber juice, like so. We're going to rinse this in cold water at least three times. I just finished rinsing our salted Korean radish and you should pick one up and you should be able to bend it without breaking it. Then it's ready. So let's have a taste. Mmm, so good as is. It's slightly salty. Now, at this point, if it tastes too salty, then go back to the sink and rinse a couple more times in cold water. Oh my God, this is so good. I'm gonna have another one. Mm. And the same thing for our cucumber. And I wanna taste it. Mmm. So refreshing. And it's just slightly salty that it's actually so good as is too. And same thing, we want to look for the cucumber to be wilted so that it's tilting over and it lost its firmness. That's what we're looking for. So we're going to squeeze out the excess water. So you want to just pick up enough to put in the palm of your hands like so. And then you just squeeze it out. Like that. I mean, you don't want to overdo it that you're breaking your vegetable, but just squeezing out the excess. I'm doing this like five times and it should look like this. Okay, and then we're just gonna let them kind of hang out in the bowl like so and finish squeezing out the rest. It's a workout, it's a good workout. And then put it in here. I prefer to use disposable kitchen gloves, especially when I'm touching acidic stuff, just to protect my hands, so. If you're interested, I will have links for you to purchase this online in my description box below and also on my website at modernpepper.com, right here. Okay, so we just need a few ingredients. Half a tablespoon of Korean red pepper flakes, half a tablespoon of brown rice vinegar, and I have half a tablespoon of honey powder. Now, if you don't wanna use honey powder, you could use sugar by all means, it's up to you. But like I said earlier, I prefer not to cook with sugar. And then I have a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. And I have a tablespoon of green scallions, just the green part only. And then this is our bibimbap gochujang sauce that we made earlier. I'm gonna put a tablespoon of this in here. Ooh, and you can't waste this. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pick up my radish and then wipe off the excess. My grandma would be so proud. I think it's also very common for that generation. She believed in using everything and she did not like to throw away anything. You know, something I learned from her. So, and then just mix it well like so. And this too, you can make this two days in advance and it'll just kind of ferment well in the refrigerator. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, you could just smell the freshness of the gochujang and the gochugaru and then the aroma is exploding in the air right now because we added vinegar. Oh, yum. So this is ready. So let's have a taste. My mouth is salivating already. Mmm. Mmm, yummy. Ooh, there's a little bit of heat but it's good kind of heat. It's not too much where I'm like, oh my God, I need water. But the heat is really nice. And it's also very crunchy, as you can hear. And just the right amount of vinegar and heat and a little bit of saltiness. This is so good. And the same thing for our wilted cucumber slices. We're just gonna put some in our palm and then squeeze it. So five times, so that was one, two, three, four. 
five. Now I love Korean cucumber panchan because there's so many different ways to make this. You can make the spicy version. You could also make the version that you don't really wilt in salt. And it's such a good treat to have when you're like hungry, you want to munch on something, but you really don't want to consume anything really like high in calorie. And cucumber panchan really does the trick for me. It just holds me over and prevents me from like pigging out on something that I really shouldn't be eating. So make sure to subscribe by clicking on that pink button that you see here at the corner it says subscribe click on that so when i upload my video for cucumber side dishes you'll be notified when i'm calling all spicy food lovers next week's video will be on bulldog with cheese that is your fiery spicy chicken with melted mozzarella cheese on top it is going to be so yummy and spicy delicious so make sure to subscribe click on that pink button so we're done squeezing everything my gloves are back on so this is so simple all you need is a tablespoon of green onions just the green part only you need just like a drizzle so less than half a tablespoon of sesame oil a pinch or two of black pepper about 10 turns on your pepper mill and then korean toasted sesame seeds like two, three dashes. That's it. And then you just mix it all up. This I would make it the day of, you know, because it's cucumber and it's also been salted. It has a short lifespan, I would say. Oh my God, it smells so good. Like the refreshing smell of fresh cucumber with the sesame oil. Oh my God, it smells so fragrant. So have a taste. Mmm. It's slightly salty, but yet it's super refreshing. And of course you could hear that it was it's very crunchy, even though we salted it and we squeezed out all the water. And then just the sesame oil, that like kind of perfumes the refreshing smell of cucumber. This is so good. Okay, let's put this aside. You need about a dozen shiitake mushrooms. And what's the best way to clean it? Instead of taking your mushroom and putting it under running water, which is not ideal, because remember, mushrooms are sponges. So if you put it under water, it will absorb all the water. That is not what we want. We want our mushrooms to absorb all the ingredients that we'll be cooking with. So the best way to clean mushrooms is take your paper towel, soak it in some water, squeeze out the excess, and just wipe it off like so and then underneath as well. Just pull the root end off like that. And then we wanna cut them kind of big. And again, when we cook these, they will shrink in size significantly. So cut them kind of thick. And then you need a quarter of a medium-sized onion. We cut them relatively thick, like so. And then add it to our plate. And then you need two garlic cloves. Cut the root end off root end off, place your knife flat, and then just strike it down, like that, like that. And then it just comes off so easily, the skin just comes off. And then just finely chop it. There we go, put it on our plate. So let's get started on frying these mushrooms. Make sure to preheat your nonstick frying pan. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of olive oil and add our onions. And then add our mushrooms. We're gonna add three pinches of salt. One, two, three. And 10 turns on your pepper mill. Like so, and let that saute on high heat until golden brown. Okay, it's been about a good two minutes, and then we're gonna add our two cloves of garlic, and this is optional. I'm gonna add one tablespoon of butter. So butter and mushroom, they just go hand in hand. So I'm gonna bring down my heat to medium now, and let the butter and the garlic just get a little bit infused with our mushroom and onion. Oh, this smells so so good. And our mushroom is ready. I'm gonna put the mushrooms on a plate and let it rest. And while it's resting, it's still gonna continue cooking. Now make sure to watch to the end because there is actually a proper way to eat your bibimbap. 
Yep, it is true. There's a proper way to eat your bibimbap and as well as torso bibimbap. So make sure to watch to the end. So I just want to show you how pretty our platter's looking already of our medley of Korean vegetable panchan. Now in addition to our bean sprouts and spinach side dishes, the other two common side dishes that are typically found in bibimbap is doraji, which is called balloon flower roots or bell flower roots, and gosari, which is called bracken roots. And you could buy these dried. So if you're using the dried doraji or gosari, please make sure to visit modernpepper.com for additional instructions on how to resuscitate the dried vegetable roots so that you could properly cook it. Now, what I'm using is the frozen kind. If you go to the freezer section at your local Korean supermarket, they will be a huge selection of all different kinds of root vegetables that you could choose from. And they will definitely have doraji and gosari because these two are sort of your super common root vegetable sides that is typically served as panchan. So when you bring them home, to frost it and then squeeze it so that all the excess water is gone like so. This is really delicious and doraji tends to be kind of bitter and taste a little bit. It sort of has a similar taste to endives. So if you like endives or radicchio, it, it's a good combination of slight bitterness with a little bit of that chewy texture that you get from root vegetables. So we're gonna get started on frying these guys and it's gonna be so yummy. Turn the heat back to high. One tablespoon of olive oil. We're gonna add a quarter of a medium sized onion in here. And I'm gonna add our gosari. Three pinches of salt. About 10 turns on the pepper mill. Then I'm gonna add about two cloves of garlic. So I'm gonna bring down my heat to medium now. Let this saute. So our gosari has been sauteing nicely for about a good two minutes on medium heat. I'm gonna turn my heat back up to high and I'm gonna add 1 8 cup of hot water. This is just to soften it like that. And then I'm gonna add quarter teaspoon of anchovy bouillon powder and a half a teaspoon of soy sauce. I'm just gonna mix it well. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, this is all done. All right, now we're gonna turn the heat back to high. Add some olive oil. Add our quarter of a medium onion. And we just wanna lightly saute this. We're gonna let this saute for a good two minutes. We're gonna bring down our heat to medium now and then add about two cloves of garlic, two pinches of salt, some black pepper, about 10 turns on your pepper mill. I'm gonna let this saute. Okay, I'm gonna turn this heat back up to high now. And the same thing, I'm gonna add 1 8 cup of hot water, pour it in here. And quarter teaspoon of anchovy bouillon powder, and mix it well. Oh, it smells so good. And let that just saute for another 60 seconds and it's ready and let that rest. It's gonna continue cooking while it's still resting. Now onto making our squash, zucchini. Now this is Mexican gray squash. You could certainly use zucchini, or if you could get a hold of Korean squash, that would be so ideal. So it looks very close to how a Mexican gray squash looks, except Korean hobak is really, really fat and short. The Korean squash and the Mexican gray squash tends to be a little bit milder and sort of a little bit softer in texture compared to your just ordinary zucchini. So if you could get a hold of these, these are great. We're gonna cut the ends off. I already cut up three of these little Mexican gray squash. Cut it down the middle like so, and just cut them relatively like one third of an inch. Hobak panchan or hobak side dish, I love. And one of the ingredients that you need to make this is seoja. It's basically tiny, tiny little, little baby shrimp and they salt it. When you make hobak panchan, it's kind of really ideal to use the seoja. And seoja, for many of you might've seen it when you make kimchi. So you need a quarter of a medium onion and cut it relatively thick. 
Now, what I also like to use when I make pobak side dish is these red pepper strings. In Korean, it's called shilgochu, and it's really, really yummy. It's just as a subtle, spicy taste. We're gonna turn our heat back on. A tablespoon of olive oil, and then our squash and onions. We're gonna add three pinches of salt. Some black pepper, about 10 turns on your pepper mill. My temperature is at super high. This cooks real fast. I'm gonna add two cloves of garlic. Mix that. Look at our squash turning nice and brown. It has been less than 60 seconds. It's already cooking nicely. This is a third cup of hot water. We're gonna pour it in here. I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of anchovy bouillon powder. Mix that well. My heat is still at high. And to this, we're gonna add half a tablespoon of seoja, desalted baby shrimp. That's gonna be a great flavor enhancer. And just mix this well. Oh, it smells so good. You can smell the garlic and the onion and the shrimp a little bit. And this dish is not meant to be overpowered by the smell or the taste of shrimp. The salted shrimp just adds a subtle taste to the zucchini that's super good. And the last ingredient to add is just a small amount of the shredded red pepper or shirgochu. Just add it to the top. I turn the heat off. This is done now. So we're gonna transfer this to a plate and then we're gonna just let this rest and it's still gonna continue cooking. So you never wanna cook it all the way through so that it still looks a little firm. So pimpapap is all about building color, so we definitely need some orange, so we'll be using some carrots, and for red, we'll be using mini bell peppers. These are sweet red peppers. Just gonna slice them up. And then just stack them, and just cut them into thin strips, julienne cuts. like so, and just continue cutting your carrots and put them on the side on a plate. Now our sweet bell peppers, just cut the ends off and slice it down the middle. And just remove the inner core. And we're just gonna cut them into thin strips. we go and then we're gonna add this to our plate and get ready for frying. We're gonna turn our heat back on high and we're gonna add a tablespoon of olive oil. And we're gonna take our carrots. We're gonna add two pinches of salt, some black pepper, 10 turns on your pepper mill. And I'm gonna literally saute this for less than 60 seconds. We just wanna lightly wilt it and then when we transfer it to our plate to let it rest, it's still gonna continue cooking. This is done. We're gonna transfer this to our plate here. Turn the heat back on high. A tablespoon of olive oil and our sweet bell peppers. A pinch of salt, a little bit of black pepper. I'm just gonna let this literally dance on the frying pan at super high heat for less than 60 seconds. Ooh, my pan is smoking nice. And this is done. Transfer it to our plate and let it rest. I'm gonna turn the heat back on, add some olive oil. So we're gonna add our bulgogi. My heat is at high and we're just gonna quickly sear this. And our bulgogi is almost ready. Just let it cook on super high heat for about a good two to three minutes. And this is ready. So we're gonna transfer this to a plate and let it rest as well. So look at our platter of Korean panchan. Doesn't it look so colorful and so healthy? And it is. Now this platter that we made is actually really perfect if you want to have a bibimbap party at your house for your friends and family. I mean, you could just put this platter out and get a big bowl of rice on the side and everyone could kind of pick and choose the vegetables that they like to eat. 
and make their own bibimbap and it's actually really really easy for the host because once everyone gets there you could just relax and enjoy too because this would be like your buffet of bibimbap so i hope you host a bibimbap party and if you do please make sure to take a picture and post it on your social media and tag modern pepper because i would love to see how your bibimbap party turned out for you now we're going to put this to the side and I have a bowl of rice. When you make bibimbap, rice is very, very important. So Korean rice is completely different from other Asian rice. So if you haven't watched my video on how to make Korean rice, make sure to please check it out. And I'm using half brown rice and half white rice. Korean rice includes a variety of different grains of rice as well as beans. So you could turn Korean rice into a bowl of superfood and make it even extra healthy. So make sure to check out that video. I recommend getting one of these microwavable Korean rice that's already cooked and it actually comes out of the microwave tasting like freshly made Korean rice. But nothing beats making fresh rice at home so I would prefer to make my own rice. But sometimes when I am in a pinch, I usually use this. I will have links for you to purchase this as well in my description box and also at modernpepper.com. So make sure to visit. So when you plate your bibimbap, I mean, it's just portion control. So start with just the amount that you think you'd be happy to have. So put a little bit here in the corner and then some of our soybean sprouts and some of our crunchy oibuchim and then some of our really pretty red bell peppers and then our kosari. Oh my god, I'm actually drooling in my mouth as I'm putting this together. I am super, super excited to eat this. And then our toraji and our zucchini. Look at the colors, so pretty. And our carrots and our mushroom and our mumuchim and our protein of choice. We're gonna put it right here in the center. Wow, that looks so pretty already. Look at that. Look how pretty that looks. And I have one sunny side up quail egg that we're just gonna lay on top like so. And look how pretty this looks. What do you think? Only fit for kings and queens at the Korean Royal Palace? Yep, and it's for you. But look how delicious and colorful this looks. Now for our torso bibimbap, this is torso platter. So you could use a round bowl, but I like to use the stone platter that's wide. I got this idea from a restaurant in LA. It's called Parks Barbecue. Their stuff is really good. That's a really good Korean restaurant. It's, it's not a fancy place, but the food is excellent. And they serve torso bibimbap in a stone platter like this. So I picked one up and you could get this at any Korean supermarket or you could order this online as well. Now you could also use Tukbegi. This is used to serve hot soups as well as cooking hot stews and this is earth wind wear and um, you could also purchase this at any Korean grocery store or you could purchase this online as well. So I will have links for all of the gadgets to so make sure to check out Modern Pepper. Now let's get started on preparing our torso bibimbap. So you want to preheat your stone platter or stone bowl for at least good three minutes on super high heat and make sure it is piping sizzling hot. About a tablespoon of olive oil. This is optional. I love to add butter to it because it's going to create that really nice buttery and super crunchy rice at the bottom that everyone loves. It's called durongji. So that's melting super fast. Oh my goodness, this is going to be so good. So you add the rice and you should hear that sizzling sound when you add your rice and you gently pat down the rice so that there's a nice seal between the bottom of the stone bowl and the rice. So the rice is in full contact with the bottom and my heat is still at super high. Let this sizzle for two minutes and then take it off the grill. So here we go. Our rice on our stone platter is sizzling. Can you hear it? You hear that? It's sizzling, it's calling out for you, saying, come and eat me. So yummy. 
That really is the sound of happiness because the nurongji on the bottom, nurongji is the golden brown burnt rice that you get from these stone pots. It is so crunchy, so yummy. It's like when you have paella, everybody wants the crusty rice on the bottom. It's the same thing. It's gonna be so good. Let's start adding the, the vegetables on our stone bowl. And the reason why we didn't add the vegetables when the rice was on the stove was because our vegetables are so good as is crunchy, but if you put them on over the high heat, the vegetables will cook and we want our vegetables to stay as crunchy as possible. I have a story to tell you about kosari. So now I'm sure there's a lot of you that could totally understand what I'm talking about. So for my mom and her friends, they love going out to the parks and finding these special areas that grow these root vegetables and kosari is one of them. So literally right now in my garage, I have a garbage bag full of kosari that she picked out with her friends and then she air dries it and then you save it and you could use it for years. And that's an old tradition where they take these root vegetables, they air dry it so that they could have it during winter times, because obviously during winter, vegetables are hard to come by. But boy, oh boy, I mean, there's so much drama around the special areas at the park. And mind you, these are public parks where only um, special friends are invited to come and join and go harvest these hard to find root vegetables. Anyway, I think it's kind of cute though. It's, you know, it gives them an opportunity to go exercise and be out in the park and, you know, find vegetables that reminds them of their, you know, motherland, right? So I know many of you know what I'm talking about. So leave me a line or two in the comment box because I want to hear from you. All right, so this is it. And then we're going to add our kogi. So for my vegetarian friends, use the mushroom bulgogi. That will be a great substitute that will make your bibimbap taste really meaty. And for my friends that are not beef friendly, definitely use chicken bulgogi. And here's our quail egg right on top, fit for a king and queen, right? Okay, so let's get started on tasting. Now it's time to taste. Bibimbap, everyone mixes with their spoon, but actually, the old school way and the proper way to mix bibimbap is with your chopstick because you don't want to smush the rice. You want to mix it with the chopstick so that the rice is still in kind of clusters and chunks. So you could pick up the vegetables with the chunks of rice. So that's sort of the proper way to do it. But by all means, there's no food police out there looking over your shoulders. You could certainly use your spoon to mix away. But the key thing is to not over mix. You don't want to mush the rice. You still want to see clusters and chunks of rice here and there. Oh God, I'm just gulping my own mouth. So here's our gochujang bibimbap sauce. And this is the non-spicy miso soy sauce that you can use. So you could pick and choose. I'm going to use the spicy one. It all depends on how spicy you like it. For me, one spoonful is more than enough. Some of my friends, they would go and put like three spoonfuls. So it really is up to you, okay? So mix it up again. So bibimbap is supposed to be mixed but not over mixed so that each bite is different because each bite will have different combination of your side vegetables. I'm going to make myself a bite of some kosari spinach and a little bit of our purugogi right here. Oh, I'm just gulping my mouth. Can you see that? Look how pretty that looks. And my torso bibimbap is sizzling and calling at me to say hurry up because you need to eat me now. Ooh, this looks so good. Okay, here we go. Mm. Wow. As you can hear, the vegetables are super crunchy and the vegetables are so flavorful. And the bibimbap gochujang sauce that we made, it just rounds out the taste of the whole entire dish with that little bit of that tucked in spicy taste. This is so yummy. And it's like a party in my mouth. Right now, there's still so many flavors that are just keep on coming forward in my mouth. This is so yummy. Now, the other proper thing to always have with bibimbap is some soup. And depending on the province or the season or restaurants, sometimes they give you kongnamulguk, which is soybean sprout soup, or some 
sometimes they give you denjang soup which is what I have this is Korean soybean paste soup called denjangguk so if you want to learn how to make this make sure to check out my blog at modernpepper.com where I will have instructions on how to make this okay ooh la la now to our grand finale our torso bibimbap so I'm gonna lift it up from the bottom and just see oh look at that we, this is the color that we're looking for this golden brown color sizzle mark on the bottom of the rice that is so golden delicious I mean oh, I can't even describe in words it's crunchy and it's all the yummy goodness and then they soaked up in our olive oil and some butter and then together with the rest of our panchan Sorry, I can't even speak right now because I'm just gulping. And so the proper way to have torso bibimbap is once you get your torso bibimbap at your table, let it sit for another two minutes so that the rice gets nice and golden brown. And when you mix your torso bibimbap, you want to kind of mix from the top down. So you're mixing the soft part of the rice and the nurangji or the crunchy golden part that I just showed you earlier, that's the part that you just want to leave as is because we want the crunchy part, the nurangji, to stay sort of intact so that when we go to eat it, we would still have big chunks and clusters of the nurangji. OMG, so good, so good. Back in the day, a long time ago, when my husband was courting me, he knew that I loved the nurangji part, so we would go out to eat and then he would give me all of his nurangji. Isn't that so sweet? So here's our nurangji that now I'm gonna pick up and I'm gonna mix. There you go, look at all this beautiful golden rice. I mean, this is like amazing, so good. And nurangji is one of those like old school snacks too. You can make nurangji and deep fry it and put some sugar on top. I mean, my grandma used to make that for me. Oh boy. All right, so again, the choice of having your traditional spicy gochujang bibimbap sauce, or if you don't fancy spicy, you could certainly try this miso soy sauce bibimbap sauce that we made together. But you know which one I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna go for the spicy one, and I'm just gonna add one tablespoon, and certainly you could add more or less, and mix it all up. Look at that. You could still see clusters of rice. Okay. Now it's time to taste. You see how hot this stone bowl is? That's the reason why you don't want to add the panchan when we're sizzling the rice because then it would overcook. Oh, look at that spoonful. Can you see? Do you see? Oh, yum. Look. Right there. Okay, here we go. It's really hot, so it's a good idea to blow on a couple times. It's not pretty when it's so hot that you have to actually spit it back out. So. Mm. 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 So good. You could hear me chewing on the nurangji. This nurangji is so good. The vegetable panchan is just so many different flavors, and each bite just is juicy, it's salty, it has different flavors of sweetness to crunchiness. It's like a party in my mouth. It's a medley of all different flavors and crunchy vegetables, and it tastes really light because this isn't like heavily drenched in oil. So this is really, really yummy. I hope you give this a try. I hope you make this, and if you do, make sure you share it with your friends and family because bibimbap is just one of those classic Korean dishes that makes everyone happy and it's vegetarian friendly it's paleo friendly and it's just yummy friendly so I want to thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed watching this video I would greatly appreciate a thumbs up so make sure to click on that thumbs up button below and lastly I would greatly greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on that pink button down there in the corner it says subscribe if you would click on that I would greatly appreciate it because your subscription means the world to me i mean it really means that i could continue to make these classic korean recipes as well as korean fusion recipes and my goal is to really share the love and the yumminess of korean cuisines with you and your friends and your family so please make sure to subscribe by clicking on that and i just want to again thank you so much for watching and until next time happy happy bibimbap time that's b bim bop b bim bop Thanks again for watching. Bye now. Calling all spicy food lovers. Next week's video will be on Burdak with cheese. That is your fiery, spicy chicken with melted mozzarella cheese on top. 
it is going to be so yummy and spicy delicious. So make sure to subscribe, click on that pink button below.